Gacenta Sao is the newest permanent roller coaster at Wiener Prater. This is the largest Gerslauer bobsled coaster, which if you're not familiar with the model, it's a more dynamic wild mouse coaster. The ride is super compact, but it features a convoluted layout that's layered on top of each other, and it just keeps you guessing until the very end. But how good are the elements? Find out in this review of Gacenta Sao. The coaster's presentation itself is sweet. The purplish pink track looks really nice, and the mess of track is hard to follow. You also have this tall barn structure and some audio around the attraction to give it some character. The one thing that confuses me though is the theme. The ride features these slick looking automobile cars, yet the few thematic elements during the ride are barnyard themed. It didn't seem to make sense. It would have made more sense to me if the cars were tractors, but this is a minor critique and maybe I just missed a plot detail. Like all the rides at Wiener Prater, the only option to experience this coaster is pay per ride and I believe it costs roughly 6 euros if I remember correctly. You purchase a ride ticket from a self-service kiosk, and then you enter the queue line. The ride is one of the longest lines at Wiener Prater, hovering around the 15-20 to 20 minute mark at worst, and this was on a weekend, and I still found that perfectly reasonable. Gacente Sao operates with several four-person cars simultaneously, and as capacity dictates, the operator can add more or remove additional cars in just a minute or two. This is much different than what you see in the United States where a maintenance worker would need to be called and it would be a much lengthier process. I didn't think the row would matter much with single car vehicles, but I found the airtime marginally better in the back row. Once dispatched, you round a corner. There are some screens with barnyard animals, there's some smoke and alarms. I'm not really sure what was going on, but it was a cute little dark ride scene before proceeding to the coaster section. You then ascend to the 79 foot or 24 meter tall lift hill. Once at the top, you start with a short series of hairpin turns. These tight turns gave solid laterals per usual like a wild mouse coaster. You then head down one of the ride's largest drops. It's pretty steep and zippy, and if you're in the back row, you'll get an itty bitty pop of airtime. You then shoot through the barn structure, twist upwards to the right, and go through the first of several mid-course brake runs. This one didn't do anything to the ride's speed. You then navigate another series of hairpin turns. You have a little extra speed through this section, so the laterals are more pronounced than the first bit. This leads to back-to-back -back bank drops. Neither drop itself is that noteworthy, but the pullout from the second is super tight and it delivers a good burst of positive G's. You then shoot upwards into another mid-course brake run, and this one does take some speed off the car though. You round another hairpin turn, getting a nice dose of laterals, and while you're still pinned to the side of the train, you then zoom down another sizable drop that also shoots through the barn. And it rides similarly to the first one, giving a faint pop of air time if you're in that back row. And I do like how the barn is filled with smoke this time as well. After rising upwards, you cross the length of the ride navigating a series of bank turns. They're taken pretty slowly, but I do like the visual of the one hugging the barn and the head choppers from the supports are cool. You then cruise through another mid-course brake run, and at this point, the ride is basically over. The coaster just doesn't have enough speed to do anything worthwhile. You turn to the side and coast over two bunny hills, but with so little speed, there's no hope of airtime. After the final mid-course brake run, you gently bank to the ground level and meekly round one last turn into the final brakes. So what would I rate Gacente Sao? I would give this Gerslauer bobsled a 6 out of 10. This ride has a solid start between that funky dark ride bit, the initial hairpin turns, and the two sizable drops. But the ride dies towards the end. The coaster is better than your average wild mouse coaster, but it's one of the weakest Gerslauer bobsleds I've ridden despite its size. It's still a fun ride though and one of the better coasters at Wiener Prater because of its unique layout. So those are my thoughts on Gacente Sao at Wiener Prater. What are your thoughts on the supersized wild mouse coaster? Do you agree it's one of the better coasters at this Austrian park? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.